Practically on the farm, success is measured by lack of disease. So usually the problems with coccidiosis are that we see losses in production, um, which comes out financially in the end. If a producer has increased mortality, uh, it's always a good idea to get a diagnostic. So oocyst counts for us is quite a, quite a significant parameter that we look at in monitoring the, the success of the vaccine. So there's definitely a, a need to monitor the performance of the anti deal program. And what they're really looking for is, um, they're looking for, for lesions from the coxy. We're continually monitoring our, our flocks' performance in terms of, of uh, live performance and case, any clinical or subclinical cases of, of coccidiosis. Um, we also do flock checks uh, where we, we will um, take a number of birds from, from a number of, of flocks and have a complete post-mortem done by veterinarians and assess gut health as well as other aspects of bird health. And uh, they assess that by looking at the whole intestine actually and determining if there are any lesions and based on uh, where the lesions are they know which type of species would potentially be causing the uh, coccidiosis. On post-mortem examination, the whole intestinal tract is removed from the bird. The veterinarian will assess the intestine from the upper, middle, and lower intestine to the cecum and rectum. Depending on the Imeria species, different locations of the intestine will be infected. The veterinarian will observe these locations and assess the severity of the lesion based on a preset guideline. Lesion score severity can help you evaluate the success of your prevention program. For more information on lesion scoring and the preset guideline, visit www.uoguelph.ca slash coxie. The other way of monitoring is with oocyte counting, where you go out and you, you take samples of excreta. The important thing is that you get enough to run your fecal OPG, but if you get too much, it really makes it a challenge to do the dilution in the lab to run the OPG count. So what I found is, say, 150 to 200 grams is a good amount of fecal sample to have. So say you have a little baggie, you want, you know, not more than an inch or two inches at the bottom of the bag. Um, otherwise, it's just a hassle in the lab. This is the type of sample container we would like it in. And we would like you, when you collect from the farm, to uh, pick up uh, feces from different areas of the barn. You want to get fecal samples um, spread throughout the barn. And you'll learn, if you have small birds like this, you'll have to pick them up as you go through the barn in order to make enough sample. If you have bigger birds, you'll want to space out where you collect your samples because not very many samples gives you enough of a fecal sample overall. So you do want to spread this out throughout the barn. And then try and pick up just the feces, not um, the litter as well. If you get the litter in there, you get sort of other you get other parasites that normally dwell in the litter and it confuses your OPG count. So this is a good example of a dropping um, from both perspectives. You can see this granular material, that's what your average fecal dropping looks like, whereas this more mucus-like material is what a cecal dropping looks like. So when you're walking the barn, you want to try and get both of those, but you'll have a much harder time finding the cecal droppings than you will the other droppings. Okay, and then we take the sample and we weigh out exactly five grams of feces. And then we add 75 mils of water. And then we have to mix it well so that it gets mixed throughout the water. And then with our counting chamber, we add 0.3 of a mil of sodium nitrate. And the sodium nitrate is the solution that uh, makes the oocyst float to the surface. And then we continue mixing our sample and as we have a vortex going in the sample, we will aliquot out the same amount of sample as we put in sodium nitrate. And then we mix it and let it stand for a few minutes to allow the over time to float to the surface. And then you place the counting chamber on the microscope. Oh, beautiful. 
just to point out a few things that are going on in the slide, these are the actual osis or coccidia osis. Um, and this particular one would be a sporulated osis. And then these other dark objects that you see on the field here are air bubbles. And then just some plant material in the background. Then I have to sit and count all the osis that are within the grid of the chamber with this fancy, fancy counter that we have here. You can evaluate your success by reducing your OSIS numbers in time. So to make sure your vaccine is working, which you're paying money for, and is having an impact on the production of your birds, is worthwhile monitoring. There, there are certain things that can be measured, but um, from the day-to-day the -day management of the barn, if you prevent the disease, then, then you've accomplished what you wanted to.